An interesting point here on Mark Allen, which is also suspicious. This is a post on Charlie Ross at WordPress.com, November 27th, 2010. A lot of people know that two boys named Johnny Gosh, age 12, and Eugene Martin, age 13, disappeared from Des Moines, Iowa in the 80s and were never found. But there was a third boy, 13-year-old Mark James Warren Allen, who also vanished mysteriously from Des Moines during that time period. And for whatever reason, he never gets any media attention. The police refused to investigate for two days. You'd think that from the previous two disappearances, they would have learned that time is of the essence, but no. So Mark Allen went missing March 29th, 1986, the day before Easter. Again, I mean, with these holidays, some of these saintness, man. 13-year-old Mark James Warren Allen told his mother he planned to walk to a friend's house down the street but never arrived at the neighbor's home, and he hasn't been seen since. Based on previous media reports, Allen initially was thought to be the third Iowa paperboy to vanish without a trace during the 80s. Johnny Gosh, 12, of West Des Moines, disappeared September 5th, 1982. 13-year-old Eugene Martin vanishes from Des Moines' south side just two years later, 84, under very similar circumstances. An in-depth Des Moines Register article on Iowa's missing persons published August 18th, 2013, confirmed Allen was not a paper boy. Teen was handful shifted back and forth. Mark's mother, Nancy Allen, admitted her son had been a handful. The teen had been shifted back and forth between her Iowa residence and his father's Minnesota home most of his young life, and he'd often get into trouble. But in late November 2010, a week normally filmed, filled with family get-togethers, shopping, and holiday activities, Nancy took time to speak with WHO-TV Channel 13's Aaron Brillbeck about what it's like waiting so many years for answers and wondering about the fate of a young son who never quite seemed to fit in. It was hard because he had been living with his dad for a while, then came back and lived with me, Nancy said. November 25th, 2010. His younger brother and older sister were real close, and he wanted to be in there in tight. They never got a chance for that to happen. The night before Easter 86, the teen left his Southwest Emma Avenue home to hang out with friends and perhaps take in a movie just as his siblings prepared for a pizza dinner. He walked out the door and the kids were getting ready to have pizza and I'll never forget it as long as I live. Alan told Brillbeck, the last thing he said to me as he walked out the door was, save me some pizza, mom. I'll be hungry when I get home. Nancy watched her son walk down the sidewalk, past the bushes, and then he was gone. He waved when he got to the bushes and I waved at him and that was that and I never saw him again, his mother said. The next morning, when Nancy realized Mark hadn't come home the night before, she knew immediately something wasn't right, but hoped against hope he'd prove her wrong. It was Easter Sunday, so I thought maybe he went to Grandma's, knowing Grandma would have an Easter basket there for each of the kids. So I asked my mom, but he wasn't there, she said. I had phone numbers for his friends, called all of them. No one had seen him. Alan said she called police, but they told her they couldn't do anything for 48 hours. Days turned into months. Police checked in Minnesota, where Mark's father lived, and in Connecticut, where the boy's paternal grandmother lived. Nothing. Alan told Brillbeck she didn't know whether her son's disappearance was linked to the disappearances of Johnny Gosh and Eugene Martin, but said police seemed reluctant to help her because of the other missing teens. Wait, what? Because other missing people are... are because there's other missing people, they're not going to help her? What the heck is this? I just feel like at this time they were just afraid of afraid of what would happen with the Eugene Martin and Gosh thing. I got the distinct feeling that they did not want parents to be frightened to let their children sell newspapers or do different things, she said. What? So they intentionally downplayed his case in the media, which seemed to have worked because he this Mark, the Mark Allen case is the least publicized. I mean, in most of these write-ups I'm reading on Gosh, they only mention... Eugene Martin is the other missing, I mean, maybe because he was also a, a paper boy, but still, I mean, this is still relevant if there's a two-year pattern here. The Des Moines Police Department Sergeant Jeff Edwards disagrees. 
I know detectives followed up on leads that did not pan out, Edwards told Brillbeck in a separate interview, aired Thanksgiving Day 2010. They were not able to locate him. He's still listed as a missing person. No kidding. Mark's mother said she doesn't know whether her son is dead or alive, but after 25 years, she'd like to know for sure so she and her son can find peace. There are times when the news says they've found a body and they're not sh sure how old it is, but they're pretty sure it's male, said Nancy. And in one instant, you hold your breath and bite your fingernails and hope that it's not your child. And in other ways, you wish they would come out and say that it is your child, so you can finally bury them and go to rest. Mark Allen was last seen wearing a light blue t-shirt, blue jean shorts, white socks, gray tennis shoes with Velcro, Velcro tabs. He has a small scar on the top of his head, and his first name might be spelled Mark with a K by some agencies involving missing children and persons. To date, there is no definitive evidence connecting Mark Allen's case to that of, U of Johnny Gosh or Eugene Martin. So apparently a DNA sample was only submitted. Oh, a DNA sample was submitted. Okay. 